Hello, Assalamualaikum. In this class, we will be discussing about the gas turbine engine, the components of the gas turbine engine, and what are the essential factors that are going to control the efficiency of the gas turbine engine and the specific work output. And also, we will see the different configuration of the gas turbine engines. Since the gas turbine engines are going to operate in a different way rather than the reciprocating engines, whereas in the case of the gas turbine engine, the combustion, compression, and the expansion are going to take place in the separate way. So let's look at the gas turbine engine. So this is the schematic of the simple gas turbine engine as you can see here. Air is actually drawn into the compressor. After the air is to be compressed into the particular compressor, the compressor can be axial flow compressor or it can be the centrifugal compressor, uh, depending upon the type of the applications where the compressor is to be used, and also the type of the gas turbine engine where it is to be used. It can be used for the land based application in order to produce the necessary amount of the electrical power output from the turbine or it can be used in the propulsion system or the aircraft engines where the net purpose is to produce a necessary thrust by the expansion of the gases in the nozzle side okay so depending upon the type of the compressor whether it can be the axial flow compressor or it can be the centrifugal compressor so the air is to be compressed in a particular compressor after the compression of the air into the uh, into the compressor the compressed air comes out at the higher pressure and then it enters into the combustion chamber where the fuel is to be burned and the flue gases are being released which contain which uh, constitute which has the high quantity of the energy and the heat is exchanged between these flue gases and the air and then the air is actually expanded through the particular turbine the expansion in the in the the expansion in the turbine is of very important consideration whereas the mass flow rate that is entering into the turbine is actually different from the mass flow rate of the air that is entering into the compressor because the combustion is to be taking place here the chemical composition of the air is going to change and also because of the fuel addition there is a more amount of the m dot that is going to enter into the turbine and the less amount of the m dot that is going to enter into the compressor but for the assumptions that we are going to take into account for the design of the simple gas turbine cycle we are going to assume that the mass flow rate that is entering into the each component of the gas turbine cycle is assumed to be the same and finally the net power that is produced by the expansion of the gases in the turbine is not only used to drive the compressor but also a part of the expansion is done in order to produce the net power output and finally the exhaust gases that are expanded in the turbine are actually going out of the system now one of the important thing which you must uh, take into account here if we remove the combustion chamber the compression and the expansion can be done but the problem is if you are going to uh, use the compression process in the compressor and the expansion process in the turbine by the removal of the combustion chamber we can uh, simply add effect that whatever the energy that is consumed in driving the compressor is actually delivered by the turbine in the expansion process so no more additional expansion is done in order to produce a useful amount of the power from the turbine only a necessary amount of the energy can be delivered by the turbine in order to drive the compressor okay so the enthalpy of the fluid element or the gases that are coming out from the compressor can be increased by burning the gases into the combustion chamber at a very high temperature thereby increasing its enthalpy thereby increasing its internal energy as a result when the expansion is done in the in the turbine the turbine not only produce a sufficient amount of the power to drive the compressor but also the expansion in the turbine can be done in order to produce the useful amount of the power 
that is necessary to drive the generator and the end side okay so this is a simple schematic of the simple gas turbine engine of course as you can see here the gas turbine of this type of the engine belongs to the open cycle category where the compressor draws the fresh air and it is to be combusted into the combustion chamber and the expansion is done in the turbine after the expansion is done in the turbine the exhaust gases are released to the atmosphere whereas in the case of the closed cycle the working fluid is recirculated okay now the important fact which is to be noticed here is that in the actual practice since because of the entropy the friction is going to increase as a result the amount of the work that is required in the compressor is actually larger and also the amount of the work that is delivered by the turbine is actually smaller so since the compressor efficiency is lower and also the turbine efficiency is lower so in order to account for these two facts that the entropy has increased that is going to increase the friction so the amount of the work required by the compressor has now increased and the amount of the power delivered by the turbine has now decreased so an additional quantity of the fuel has to be burnt into the combustion chamber in order to produce the necessary amount of the power but there is a particular limit in order to add the fuel into the combustion chamber of course if you are going to add a fuel more than the required value it will uh, create an additional heating additional heating this additional adding of the fuel into the combustion chamber or the additional heating in the combustion chamber will increase extremely the temperature of the gases entering into the turbine side this additional heating of the fuel into the combustion chamber will increase the net temperature of the gases that are going to enter into the turbine side as a result the turbine blade can sustain up to a particular temperature otherwise they will uh, damage so there is a particular metallurgical limit based on the creep strength of the material of the turbine blades that are going to rotate at the high and that are going to rotate at the higher speeds so this air fuel ratio has a particular value depending upon the power output required based at the exhaust side there is another important factor which you must take into account in the earlier days roughly around when the discovery of the gas turbine engine was taken into account in 18 in earlier 18th century so the compressor efficiency was no more than 60% and the maximum working temperature limit for the turbine blades was not to exceed more than 650 kelvin but in the modern type of the engines the design improvement has made in such a way that one can achieve the compressor efficiency and the turbine efficiency up to more than 85% to 90% so the working temperature of the working fluid in the expansion process in the turbine can go beyond a value of 1650 kelvin okay so that is a huge temperature that can increase a huge amount of the power in the turbine of course if you have the maximum cycle temperature is decided by the temperature of the air that is entering into the turbine blades this is the maximum possible temperature throughout the cycle okay remember that is the air or the gases that are coming out from the combustion chamber are maintained at a very high temperature so when they are coming out from the combustion chamber they possess a very high temperature and this high temperature high pressure air is when expanded into the turbine side not only a useful amount of the power is produced but a sufficient amount of the energy is also delivered to the compressor to drive it from the turbine initially the compressor has to be driven from the external source once the turbine start rotating then it can keep a uh, rotating on its own because of the higher in and higher inertia and because of the continuous burning in the combustion chamber the power to the compressor can be driven by the turbine now as far as the combustion process is concerned we know from the knowledge 
of your power plant engineering the combustion process can be taken place at a constant volume or it can be taken place at the constant pressure in the earlier days the combustion process was taken place at the constant volume because theoretically the thermodynamic efficiency thermal efficiency of the engine is higher at the constant volume at the constant volume all of the energy that is going to supply it is going to increase the amount of the internal energy as a result the temperature of the working fluid is going to increase thereby increasing the thermal efficiency but there are some sort of the mechanical difficulties which are associated in having the combustion at the constant volume and also we have the problem of isolating the wall in the combustion chamber when doing the combustion at the constant volume moreover the combustion is intermittent okay it is not continuous so the various attempts has been made in earlier 18th century in order to improve the process of the combustion at the constant volume but Uh, later it was uh, discontinued the combustion at the constant volume but later the combustion at the constant volume has discontinued and the combustion at the constant pressure has been preferred because the combustion has the constant pressure is a continuous process and there are less mechanical difficulties that are associated in having the combustion at the constant pressure the combustion at the constant pressure is a continuous process and as a result since the thermal efficiency is lower but we can have the uh, combustion at the constant pressure that is more easier than the combustion at the constant volume okay now these are the some of the important fact which you must keep into account another important fact that can be driven from this schematic diagram is that when you are going to change the electrical power output the amount of the power that is to be generated into the turbine has to become changed continually in order to meet the demand at the generator side okay so whenever the electrical power is drawn from the generator the generator is also moving at a particular rpm it has a particular torque and this mechanical turbine is also moving at a particular rotational speed and thus also at a particular torque so the power requirement has to be matched continually if the load on the generator is going to increase ultimately the turbine has to produce or has to supply a more amount of the power to the generator in order to satisfy the demands the turbine can only provide a higher amount of the power if the enthalpy drop is higher and the enthalpy drop is can be higher only if the amount of the mass flow rate that is going to enter into the turbine is higher so we need to add in additional quantity of the fuel so that the power output at the load side has to be managed continually but for the large thermal power plants when you are going to talk about the steam engines and when you are going to vary the mass flow rate by controlling the combustion uh, products it takes a huge amount of the time in order to manage this power output through the combustion process okay so in the case of the gas turbine engine this technique is not taken into account and for the case of the gas turbine engines these are very very different from the reciprocating engines where the compression combustion as well as the expansion are taking place in a single component but in the case of the gas turbine engine the compression combustion as well as the expansion in the turbine are taking place in the separate component so the design of the gas turbine engine can be made in the different ways and it is far more different from the design of the reciprocating engines okay. so here we have the cycle for the closed gas turbine engine where the working fluid is recirculated inside the cycle as you can see here we have the compressor here and we have the turbine here 
in between we have the heater that is going to heat up the working fluid and the working fluid after the expansion from the turbine is recirculated through the pre-cooler where its temperature is going to decrease and then it is going to enter into the compressor at a particular inlet temperature and the inlet pressure and after the compression process where the pressure is increased now it is going to enter into the heater where the heater is a heat exchanger the heating can be provided by the different means but for now you need to understand the air which is actually coming out from the compressor it is heated in the heater and once the temperature is to be raised up to a particular value the final expansion is done in the turbine and the turbine can be used to drive the compressor again by mean of the shaft it is connected as you can see here whereas the rest of the expansion can be done in order to produce the necessary amount of the power expansion from the turbine the air can be drawn and it can again be recirculated thereby reducing the temperature at the pre-cooler okay now in the pre-cooler when the working fluid is actually taking heat it can take heat from the other cycle so at the upper part you can have the gas turbine cycle and in the lower part one can have the Rankine cycle in the way that the water is actually taking heat from the this hot air and its temperature has now increased and this hot water is actually going to enter into the boiler section one of the chief advantage of the closed cycle is that apart from the air other gases can be used in the closed cycle because we do not have to uh, reject the air into the open atmosphere okay so this is the main advantage of the closed cycle where the gases other than air can be used with higher thermal properties which can increase the efficiency of the system helium can be used in such a type of the systems and we will discuss it what are the advantages that are to be associated with it so we have the next design that is going to show us the use of the heat exchanger here and that is going to preheat the air the air first of all is drawn into the compressor it is being compressed into the compressor air coming out from the compressor is at the higher pressure and it is going to enter into the heat exchanger where it is going to take the heat from the exhaust cases leaving out from the turbine as a result there is a small temperature increase in the air so the quantity of the fuel which is to be burnt into the combustion chamber has now reduced as a result the efficiency will increase the efficiency is the ratio of the net work output divided by the amount of the heat supplied so the quantity or the amount of the heat which is to be added into the combustion chamber has now reduced because the temperature of the air has now increased by mean of the heat exchanger and once the temperature of the air is increased after the combustion of the gases these gases are going to enter into the turbine where the final expansion is done and again the turbine is going to drive the compressor and the rest of the power which is to be produced by the turbine is going to drive the generator okay and the gases that are going to leave the turbine at the higher temperature can be utilized in the heat exchanger to preheat the air entering into the combustion chamber okay so depending upon the effectiveness of the heat exchanger and the type of the heat exchanger is used so and the type of the heat exchanger used one can make this type of the configuration in order to have the higher efficiency the next type of the configuration which is shown here at the right hand side here we have the compressor and we have the turbine here again the turbine is going to drive the compressor but this time the configuration is different because the air which is coming into the compressor is now entering into the heat exchanger and after 
entering into the heat exchanger and after coming out from the heat exchanger it goes directly into the turbine without taking part into the combustion chamber now this type of the configuration is feasible when we are going to say the expansion in the turbine is not going to damage the blades let's say the combustion is done by mean of the coal the products of the combustion are exchanging heat with the incoming air that is going to enter into the turbine directly after passing from the compressor so the fuel which is to be burned it's maintained at the high temperature and the incoming air that is coming out from the compressor is, 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 is at the low temperature as a result there is uh, there will be a difference of the temperature so there will be the heat exchange in the heat exchanger and finally depending upon the efficiency of the heat exchanger and the effectiveness of the heat exchanger the air which is coming out from the heat exchanger has to be at the higher temperature enough to drive the turbine such that it can easily drive the compressor and it can produce the necessary amount of the power of course now for this type of the case the amount of the power produced by the turbine would be less now we have the next configuration here uh, which is shown as you can see here so this type of the turbine can be divided into two parts so the first part is referred as the gas generator and the second part is referred to as the power turbine the high pressure turbine is going to drive the compressor whereas the expansion is done into the two stages so the first turbine is going to drive the compressor whereas the second turbine is going to produce the necessary amount of the power when you are going to expand the gases in the turbine and the power produced by this turbine is going to produce the net amount of the work so if the load on the generator side is going to increase of course you can increase or decrease the mass flow rate of the air that is going to enter into the uh, second turbine okay since it is not going to drive the compressor so this is the independent uh, mechanical gas turbine engine that can satisfy most of the time the changing and the fluctuating load demands okay because one can easily control the mass flow rate and the air that is going to enter into the uh, compressor okay so this turbine will be used to drive the compressor whereas the purpose of the second turbine is only used to drive the uh, generator okay so this type of the configuration can be done a more complex design can be shown here as you can see here we have the low pressure compressor and we have the high pressure compressor the high pressure compressor is driven by the high pressure turbine and the low pressure turbine is going to drive the low pressure compressor so in this type of the configuration various components such as the heat exchanger reheat combustion chamber and a intercooler these components are going to aid of course these components are going to increase the efficiency net work output and reduce the quantity of the fuel supply into the combustion chamber but on the other hand these are going to increase the cost of the system and also they are going to aid a complexity into the simple gas turbine engine okay and additionally when you are going to add the several components into the gas turbine engine the weight of the engine has to increase okay so weight to power ratio has to be taken into account when you are going to introduce each one of these components now in this type of the configuration so the compression is done between two stages in the first stage when the air that is coming out from the low pressure compressor is going to attain a particular pressure ratio apart from increase in the pressure in the lp compressor the temperature of the air is also going to increase because when you are going to compress the gases this the temperature of the air that is leaving from the lp compressor is going to increase 
so if you are going to somehow decrease the temperature of the air then the work of the compression needed for the hp compressor will become reduced okay so this is the way we are going to increase the efficiency of the compressor the efficiency of the compressor can be increased only if the temperature raise in the compression process is minimum as minimum as possible okay so this temperature is going to uh, reduce in the intercooler where the coolant most of the time is water which has the higher heat transfer coefficients is going to exchange heat with the incoming hot air as a result the air which is coming out from the intercooler will be at a temperature lower than the temperature of the air that is going to enter into the coolant and in the hp compressor when the air is going to enter into the hp compressor again it is to be compressed up to a particular pressure ratio and it comes out at a higher pressure but since the compression is to be done a slight increase in the temperature has to be taken into account and it is exchanging heat with the exhaust gases of the lp turbine that is going to leave the lp turbine and it is going to exchange heat with the heat exchanger with the exhaust gases that are going to leave the lp turbine as a result the efficiency of the system is going to increase because the quantity of the fuel required in the combustion process has now decreased as a result the air is preheated up to this point and further the combustion is done in order to increase the temperature further and the expansion is done in the hp turbine to drive the hp compressor here the purpose of the hp turbine is only to drive the hp compressor and when the expansion is done up to a particular expansion ratio in the hp turbine the gases that are coming out from the hp turbine are at the low pressure ratio and at the lower temperature so the gases are again reheated into the reheat chamber up to the same temperature and but with a lower pressure of course and then they are going to enter into the lp turbine and the rest of the expansion when done into the lp turbine the purpose of the lp turbine is to drive the lp compressor and also to produce the necessary amount of the power required at the generator side and when these exhaust gases are going to leave the lp turbine they are finally going to take the part in the heat exchange with the incoming air coming out from the hp compressor okay thereby increasing the system efficiency of course the design of the gas turbine engine has now become more and more complex but with the complexity and the adding of the cost into the system the thermal efficiency specific work output of the engine has now increased okay the the next is the twin spool engine as you can see here the lp compressor is driven by the lp turbine and the hp compressor is driven by the hp turbine but one of the important thing which must be taken into account here is that in order to have the higher efficiency without the heat exchanger a higher pressure ratio is needed as a result the compression process is divided into two stages so when you are going to divide the compression into the two stages and we have no intercooling then such a type of the compression can be done in most of the twin spool engine where the higher pressure ratios are involved now depending upon the type of the engine the gas turbine engine is the type of the compressor is used the gas turbine engine can be of the aircraft engine or it can be of the land based application where the net purpose is to produce the electricity okay so looking at this diagram the net purpose of the turbine is to produce electricity because the final expansion is not done into the nozzle where the necessary application 
is to produce the effective amount of the thrust at the end of the process of course when you are going to deal with the compressor the compressor can be of the axial flow type or the compressor can be of the centrifugal type in order to achieve the higher pressure ratio and to deal with the low volume flow rate we are going to use the centrifugal compressor but in the case of the heavy engines that are going to incorporate the large volume flow rate of the air then it is necessary to use the axial flow compressor because if you are going to deal with the large volume flow rate of the air the efficiency of the centrifugal compressor has to become decrease so most of the time when we are going to deal with the gas turbine engine where we are going to deal with the large engines and large volume flow rate of the air the axial flow compressor are more a suitable choice okay but there are a few limitations to the axial flow compressor the one of the important limitation is state in the last stages of the compression the density of the air is so low and the velocity is so high such state the mechanical vibration in the blades of the compressor tries to stall the blade moreover if the compression of more than 8 ratio 1 is attempted in a single compression then the blade will try to damage still we are interested in using the axial flow compressor because we have to deal with the large volume flow rate of the air okay so such a type of the turbine where the efficiency is increased by having the higher pressure ratio without the use of the heat exchanger and the compression is divided into stages such a type of the turbine is known as a twin spool engine okay also we have the sp turbine here we have the lp turbine here the purpose of the sp and the lp turbine is to drive the compressors respectively but at the end of the expansion the fluid has a sufficient energy in order to produce the necessary amount of the work output that is going to drive the generator okay now the next is we have the close cycle as you can see here we have the complex close cycle gas turbine engine first of all start from this point we have the compressed gas supply by mean of the valve we can regulate the amount of the gas supply that enters into the compressor and once the air is compressed from the compressor it enters into the heat exchanger where it is going to exchange the heat with the exhaust gases coming out from the turbine as a result the efficiency of the gases as a result the efficiency of the cycle is going to increase and also the air that is going to enter into the heat exchanger comes out at a higher temperature and in order to increase its temperature further and higher so that the expansion in the turbine can be done to produce the necessary amount of the specific work output it is going to exchange the heat in the heat exchanger called the gas heater where its final temperature is increased and the air is ready to expand into the turbine and from the final expansion the turbine can be used to drive this compressor and the rest of the expansion can be done to produce the necessary amount of the electrical work output of course this uh, power which is to be produced at the turbine end is a mechanical power and it has to be converted into the electrical power by means of the generator so the exhaust gases coming out from the turbine can be used directly to heat up the gases coming out from the compressor okay now one of the important thing which is different here from the other engines is that we have another auxiliary cycle operated at the top blades the blades has no longer to deal with the flue gases rather than the hot air 
and that is purely going to increase the net power output in the turbine from the cycle from the cycle we also need to discuss about the precooler which is located here the precooler is going to when the air that is coming out from the heat exchanger either it can be blown off or if it is recirculated again so this can be recirculated by decreasing its temperature in the precooler 